retail in focus. Target just reported its second quarter earnings. They beat expectations both on revenue and on earnings. The stock is up this morning. Uh, take a look. Target results follow a tough day for retailers yesterday. Dick Sporting Goods was a disaster, as was Coach and Home Depot. They were all lower following their earnings releases. We want to bring in Capitalist Pig.com founder, Fox News contributor, Jonathan Honig. Jonathan, good to see you. Great, great to be here, Thank Maria. You so Thank much you. For joining My us. pleasure. So, markets. Um, have this momentum, and yet the retail story tells us something different about what's going on with the consumer. Well, and the retail, it? it's been going on for the better part of a year now. As you said, retail stocks have been a disaster, and Target has been among the biggest disasters. Here's a stock that is not far out from its 19, or excuse me, its 2010 low. This is really a, a troubled company and a troubled brand. So even as we're seeing stocks like Walmart, new 52 week high, Costco doing very well, well, I think Target is one you want to stay away from, despite a little bit of a bump, as you said. In yesterday's action. Look at this tweet that the president put out this morning, Jonathan. Amazon is doing great damage to tax paying retailers, towns, cities, and states throughout the U.S. are being hurt, many jobs being lost. That's the tweet that the president put out this morning. I know that retail is real bifurcated online versus brick and mortar. But do you agree with that? That, that is, I, I, Maria, I think that is, that is a borderline fascism. I think it's um, despicable. I think it's, in my opinion, it's direct result from the president's antagonism towards the Washington Post, which Jeff Bezos owns, and Amazon.com. What company has created more jobs than Amazon? What company has created more wealth than Amazon? Every day they announce a new tremendous innovation. So for the president to come out hard against Amazon and wishy-washy on neo-Nazis? Come on. So I, I think what's interesting is that the president often speaks so directly to his base and is so into the zeitgeist of his base and understands their feelings. And I think that across the country, so many of Trump's base are living in towns where they no longer have stores, that people are going out of business, and that they're seeing their jobs being lost to Amazon, to technology. All of this, this notion that these jobs in middle America are never coming back that so many people have talked about. And so there's this real, very real fear that people have of technology of Amazon, and he's playing into that right, for his face. He's, right? playing, he's playing into it, so let's get rid of the cotton gin. We can put everyone to work, you know, work, working on the farm again. I mean, Amazon creates jobs. That's what really frustrates me about the president and his economic per perspective is that he believes in that fixed pie mentality. There's a certain number of jobs that gets the golden ticket, as Stephen Miller talked about it, and they're going to pass it out to whoever it's appropriate to. So, you know, to attack Amazon.com, I mean, I, they've, they've destroyed jobs, but how many, I don't Hundreds of millions of jobs have they created? How much wealth have they created? Well, so, wh why do you see so many industries sell off when Amazon gets into the business, right? I mean, look at the other day when Amazon got into the fresh fruit, when said that they were going to acquire Whole Foods, the, the sector sells off. You've got them getting into travel, the sector sells off. So that's why probably this idea that Amazon takes jobs is, is, is out there and the president's talking and about it. And you've got, I don't know, 100 million, 200 million people selling their wares on Amazon, selling their books on Amazon, doing business yeah, on true, Amazon. Yeah. This is a fixed pie mentality. Yeah. But isn't it true that it also has, Amazon has to be telling that story for themselves? Because mm -hmm. the, the thing that I, I see all the time with companies, right, is there's this David and Goliath thing. We always like the underdog in many, many ways. Amazon is quickly becoming the Goliath here and no longer the you know, the disruptor, the underdog. They're now becoming the behemoth. So don't they have to tell their story of what they're doing for the economy, what they're doing for jobs? Because that's an untold story. You don't hear that happening very often. The, the president is the Goliath. He has the guns. All Amazon can do is trade. That's why they're successful. So they're the underdog in this scenario, and the president should just butt out of the economy altogether. So, so Jonathan, how is it affecting jobs in the lower class, lower middle class? I mean, these are the communities I think that um, really are, are, are confused about the new technology surge uh, in, in our country because those are the towns and those are the, the cities where you're seeing stores being shut down. So how does Amazon communicate that to that population of people? They benefit that population of people. I mean, they benefit everyone. But who do they benefit more than folks who don't have a lot of money who are able to acquire what they want, not just at the local store, from anywhere in the world at a massive discount for, for literally pennies they have it delivered to their door. I don't care where it is, the inner city or, or Fifth Avenue. And so when the president talks about a trade war, for example, with, with the China slapping what at one point it was 45 percent tariffs, maybe it's 35 percent tariffs, you know who that hurts the most? Rich folks can probably afford it. It's those lower income people, the people who are just struggling for which 35 percent more or 40 percent more on the goods they buy has a major uh, detrimental impact. So do you not think that NAFTA was bad for American workers? 
Uh, uh, well, free trade is good. NAFTA but wasn't NAFTA perfect. Ever, yeah. okay. NAFTA was not perfect by any means. I believe we should have completely opened yeah. trade. I mean, I, I, the president to me, uh, you know, he, he wants to micromanage the economy. Unfortunately, he doesn't have free market instincts. I get the sense he's the kind of leader who would, he would go along with the purge, I think, if it felt like he would improve his, his numbers with the, with the public. On, so, the, on the other hand, he says that the, the, a million jobs have been created since he, he came to office, and that has been his number one focus. Job well, he, said, he says he created a million jobs. And no hubris here. Any jobs that have been created have been created by the innovators in this company, the Ubers, the Facebooks, the Amazons, exactly the company he's attacking this morning here. So, I mean, the, the role of the government, I don't know if the president understands this, is not to micromanage the economy. It's to free the economy and let the innovators do the heavy lifting for what, them. What kind of effect do you think, um, you know, we saw over early in this administration, the president going to Twitter and, and criticizing businesses. We're seeing him do that again. What kind of effect does that have uh, for the Amazons, for other uh, companies that he calls out? It's tremendously negative. I mean, we're, we're all investors here. I mean, how do you feel? You wake up and you see the president is dissing your stock on Twitter. And as you said, we saw uh, even in the early part of his presidency, let alone the campaign, immediate reactions to in, in, in the market. So how are you supposed to invest? You know, it's, it's easier to figure out how many pampers Walmart's going to sell than whether you're going to PO the president and he's going to take uh, uh, take against your company on Twitter. I think it's a real risk. It's a political risk. We always talked about the political risk under Obama. This is a, a t tremendous political risk under the president who's a business guy and he's attacking business. Yeah. I don't uh, get it. We, we wanted to show you uh, Target because the numbers are better than expected and the stock is actually trading higher. Um, and, and, and retail, obviously, we wanted to get your take on, on retail. Jonathan, real quick, would you tell clients to buy retail right here despite what we're seeing, what we saw yesterday in terms of Dick's Sporting Goods and some of the others? I think you have to be very selective. The best of the bunch, Costco and Walmart. I think the time to get into Target, ironically, Maria, is once the dividend's been cut, once they're talking about oh, cutting wow. stores, I think that's the time to get in. Value stocks oftentimes become more value stocks. Great company, not a great stock right Buy now. Buy low. Got it. Yeah. Jonathan, good Thank to you. see you. Thanks so much, Jonathan Honig there. Coming